In this next section, we will first listen to Louise Lawrence Israel talking about her life during the war. Then we will listen to Tiggis Swift's research on Louise's transition to life and hiding. Finally, we will listen to Katie Crookham's presenting her research on life of Dutch Jews during the war. After our friend Selma witnessed the Nazis rounding up her family and deporting them, we knew we had to move to Amsterdam. My parents were afraid that the Nazis would come to our door next with a roundup truck. So, after living for a short time with a military friend of my father's, we moved into the top floor of an Amsterdam roadhouse. We moved a very small amount of stuff, because otherwise people would have questioned us. I was so little I don't remember if we had separate rooms. I have a feeling it was just one big attic and they roped areas off with screens and sheets and things. But there were different areas. My father had no income. He had been in the 30s a collector of stuff that he thought was pretty or cool. He used to trade for everything we needed. Instead of giving money, he would trade fabric, terry cloth, etc. Around the middle of September 1944, my father had traded most of the things we had because we had so far survived. He figured he needed to make emergency rations, so he traded for butter, sugar, and flour. We did not have a kitchen, we only had a camping stove. So somehow, with the sugar and butter and flour, he managed to make large amounts of cookies on this little camping stove. He must have made big sheets and cut them. And he put them in big tins, sealed them, and that was our emergency food. There were days my brother and I shared half a cookie as our parents and Selma went hungry. That was all the food we had. We did have running water so we could flush the toilet, though we did not have a bathroom. We just had a toilet and sink. And if you wanted warm water, then you had to boil it on the camping stove. The other memory I have is the air raids. Towards the end of the war, we had a lot of bomber planes flying over Holland. At that time, bombs were attached underneath the wings of a plane, not inside it. So sometimes, stray bombs would fall and destroy whole buildings. If a bomber plane was coming toward Amsterdam, the piercing air raid alarms would sound. They meant to go into the shelters, which were underground, to provide protection. Since we couldn't go into the shelters, and the strongest part of an Amsterdam row house is the staircase, my mom would grab a tin of cookies when the alarm sounded, and we would all tiptoe out into the staircase, returning inside only after the all-clear alarm sounded. We sometimes went out 20, 25 times in a single day and night. For three years, Louise Lawrence Israel never went outside. She knew other playmates except her brother. She had hold his hand at night while Louise she slept. Louise was often hungry and her hands and feet were often cold. She never cried when she was scared. Louise called Maria so the Nazi wouldn't know she was Jewish. The Israel family lived in Holland in 1942 when the Nazi invaded. They lived in a small town. At one point, they were given an order to locate to Amsterdam where the Nazi could keep them in one area. Louise's father suspected what happened to Jews, so he found a top of marmot in a row house, making sure it was near parks so he could sneak out at night to get food and news and medicine. Fake identity papers in hand, he moved his family into hiding. This is how Louise's family survived during the war. During the Holocaust, there was much resistance to German occupation in the Netherlands. Holland was a neutral country and, though they were not surprised, it angered the Dutch when the Nazis invaded. Before the Nazis entered the Netherlands, the Dutch had already started making preparations to prevent occupation. Unfortunately, the Nazis were expecting this and were able to avoid the measures that the Dutch took against them. The invasion spurred many Dutch citizens to join the resistance. Even citizens who were not part of the resistance helped the Jews by providing food and necessary items to the resistance. Some of the citizens also helped by finding and or providing hiding places for Jews.